Trinity. Trinity and Trinity. Children. 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 Yes, abide in Christ. Are you happy to be in church today? Are you sure? I didn't hear you. Okay, let's have a test. If you are happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you are happy and you know it, shout amen. Amen. If you are happy and you know it, and your face will surely show it. If you are happy and you know it, do or do. Amen. Great. I am very, very excited to bring service to you today in your homes. Before we begin the service, children, if you are joining us, for the very first time, this is the Children's Ministry of the Trinity United Church, Legon. And where can you find us? Within the Trinity Theological Seminary Campus. Children, you know I'll tell you to call your friends and tell them service has started. This is also the time to go for your Bibles your hymn books, your notebooks, your pens if you use pens, and your pencils if you use pencils. Have you gone for them? I'm giving you one minute, 30 seconds left, 20, 10. We begin the service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great. You want to close your eyes now as we enter into a time of prayer. Think of God. Picture him on his throne. Think of his majesty, his greatness, and tell him something. Fi wakume mu eke bi bi tre nyame anope. Jeo trivi no ke na nyongbo nuko. From the bottom of your heart, say something to God this morning. Tell him how you love him. Tell him how grateful you are for all his mercies. Yes, day in, day out, new mercies we see. Every morning, great indeed is God's faithfulness towards us. I want to say thank you. At this point, you and I have both sinned against God. We have done things he says we should not do. We have insulted our brothers and our sisters. We have said bad things that have made our friends feel very, very bad. We want to say sorry. We have taken things that we have said is not us because we are afraid we'll be beaten. We want to say sorry. We have done things. We've seen others being punished for it. And we have not been able to say, oh, it was me. We want to say sorry. Think about all the things. We know, we know the things that we shouldn't do. We have not read our Bible every day. We have not prayed every day. Let's say sorry and ask God to forgive us. At this point, even as our SHS2 and JHS2 students have gone back to school, we want to pray for them and commit them into the hands of God, that God will continue to protect them. And all of them will come home safely. I want to bring our nation Ghana before God, that he will continue to give us his peace. Bring Trinity United Church 
before God. If you don't fellowship with Trinity United Church, bring your church also before God. Let's commit today's service into God's hands. Let's pray that God and Holy Spirit will come and take absolute control. He will speak through each and every teacher and that we will hear his word and his word alone. Shall we pray? Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity once again to listen to your word in our homes. Father, help us to listen attentively and be doers of your word and not hearers only. Holy Spirit, please come and take absolute control over this service. In Jesus' name have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever Amen. Amen. Great. So, Ezekiel, are you ready? Are you, are you ready? All right. Sit comfortably as Auntie Mona brings our lesson to us. After that, Auntie Jifa will follow with message for the primary class. And she will hand over to Uncle Michael for the senior class. After that, I will come back with the announcements and benediction. When your class is over, you can go to the chat section of YouTube and ask questions if you have questions. And we, your teachers, will bring you answers. But when your class is in session, Pay attention to everything that the teacher is saying. Auntie Mona, we are ready. Okay, thank you, Auntie Bridges, for your wonderful message. Children, abide to cry. Children, abide to cry. Good. I'm happy to bring you today's word once again. Now, before we start today's word, who remembers what we spoke about last week? Who remembers what last week's message was about? I'll mute it and let's... Last week we spoke about Jesus and the Centurion. No. Last week, were you here with us? You were not. Okay. Papa Kofi, do you remember who we spoke about last week? Myra, do you? Who was it about? Just special person's name. Um, no, we spoke about someone, not Jesus. Yes, Jesus was there, but we spoke about... A partic one particular person. Okay, lo, let me just go ahead and say, last week we spoke about Gideon. Do you remember Gideon and the altars of Baal? Okay, so now today we have another wonderful story. Okay, we are continuing with the theme for the month, which was God's generals. Today we are going to talk about another one of God's generals. His name is is something before we talk about something there's a special story surrounding his birth i want us to take our action song after that we'll take our memory verse for the day and then we'll hear this wonderful story about something okay so are you ready for our action song we have yes yes 
Are you ready for the action song? Yes. yes. It's about a soldier in the army of the Lord. Do you remember the song? Who can guess the song? Myra, what song is that? Soldier. Good. I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. Good. So we all have to do the actions. I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. Okay. So let's go. Soldier in the army of the Lord. I am a soldier in the army. I am a soldier in the army of the Lord. I am a soldier in the army. And if a soldier falls down, hey, in the army of the Lord, he will rise again in the army. And if a soldier falls down, hey, in the army of the Lord, he will rise again. Good. So we've, we've had a lovely action song. Now let's take today's memory verse. It's going to come up on the screen. So watch today's memory verse. Do you all have your pencils with you? Everybody have your pencil or your Bibles. How about your Bibles or your notebooks? Good. Very good. So if you don't have your pencils or your notebooks, have your Bibles with you. And let's see today's verse. So let's go to today's verse and see what we have. So today's memory verse is from Judges 13, 7c. Okay, Judges 13, 7c. Let me say it and then one person will say it for me. For your son will be dedicated to God as a Nazirite all the days of his life. Judges 13, 7c. Amen. Good. So, can someone say the memory verse? Who can say it for me? Myra, then Lebene. Okay. So, Myra, let me say it one more time. Judges 13, 7c. For your son will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite all the days of his life. Judges 13, 7c. Amen. Okay, so Myra, go on. Judges 13, 7, C. For your son will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite all the days of his life. Judges 13, 7, C. Amen. 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 Who is the next person saying it for us? Judges 13, 7, C. For your son will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite all the days of his life. Judges 13, 7, C. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lebanese. Thank you. Good. So today's memory verse is about Samson and dedicating him as a Nazarite all the days of his life. So now let's go ahead and talk about, learn about the story of Samson. Let's see what Samson's story is about and how special it is. Good. So today's story about Samson is that, let's talk about a brief history of the Israelites. So the people of Israel did not obey God on the promised land. So God made their enemies, the Philistines, rule over them for 40 years. Now, there was a man and a woman. The man is called Manua. 
and his wife, they loved God. They were obeying all of God's instructions. So let's see what happened. Manwa and his wife, okay? Manwa, that's the man and his wife. They had no children. So let's see what happened. An angel of the Lord appeared to Manwa's wife, okay? And then Manwa's wife told him, Manwa, what the angel said. The angel told Manuel's wife that she was going to have a child and that child should be given to God to do God's work. That's what the angel told Manuel's wife. Now, the, when Manuel's wife went to tell him, the Manuel said, no, I want to know what this angel said. So they prayed for the angel to return to give them more instructions on how to bring up this child that the angel had told them they were going to have, how they should bring the child up. Then the angel came again and he appeared to Manuel's wife again. Let's see what the angel said. So when the angel got there, she went to call her husband, Manuel. And then the angel said, you are going to have a child. Now that child is going to be special. He's going to be called, he's going to be a Nazirite now. If you're a nice right, you are not supposed to cut your hair. You are not supposed to drink alcohol. So the angel said, the child you are going to give birth to is a nice right. So don't cut his hair and don't let him drink any alcohol. Okay? So they, have to, they were going to make sure that they would cut the child's hair and he wouldn't drink any alcohol. They sacrificed goat and grains to God. Grains is rice. These, all those things are grains. So they sacrificed it to God. Now, the man ascended, the angel ascended in the smoke of the sacrifice to God. And then they saw an angel. They knew that the man was an angel. Good. So after that, some, uh, Manuel's wife gave birth. They gave birth to Samson. And they were very, very happy. And they did exactly as the angel had commanded or instructed them to do. They were not supposed to cut his hair and he was not supposed to drink any alcohol. So then it means he was a Nazirite from birth. So now when we say Nazirite, I'm sure you all know who a Nazirite is, right? Samson was a Nazirite. Before his parents would, uh, gave birth to him, the angel of the Lord visited his parents and they instructed, he instructed them that the child they were going to give birth to, he were not supposed to cut his hair or he was not supposed to drink alcohol. And a person like that is a Nazirite. Good. So Samson was a Nazirite. So God blessed Samson and the spirit of God was supporting him as he grew up. Okay, so he never cut his hair. His hair was very long until he grew up. His hair was very long. So Samson was a Nazirite and he was blessed by God. Okay, so... Now, can someone tell me who a Nazirite is? When, I say, when they say Nazirite, who knows what a Nazirite is or what it means? Myra, then Lebene. Myra, who is a Nazirite? Tell me one thing. There are two things he's not a Nazirite is. One of you say one each. Lebene, can you tell us? A Nazirite, a Nazirite is someone who... Who doesn't cut their hair? <laughs> okay. So another yes. thing Nazirite is, is what? Nazirite does not drink alcohol. Thank you, Kenzie. Good. Thank you very, very much. Now, so a Nazirite is not supposed to cut his hair. He's not supposed to drink alcohol. And he has to live his whole life for God. He will do God's work all his life. So it's not just not cutting his hair and not drinking alcohol. His life is wholly and solely for God. Do you understand? He's going to live his whole life doing the works of God and following God's instructions. That's who a Nazirite is. Now, before we continue, we'll sing our, our second action song, and then we'll see if you can remember or see what we have learned from today's story about Samson, okay? So our second song is my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes. 
we all sing today's song, my head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes. And then we'll come back and see what we have learned for today. Okay. My shoulders, my knees, my toes, my head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes, my head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes. They all belong to Jesus. My head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes, my head. My shoulders, my knees, my toes, my head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes, they all belong to Jesus. When God chooses you, you have to, your whole body belongs to who? Belongs to Jesus. Good. So now children, what have we learned today? Today we have learned that God gives us instruction to follow. Well, just like um, Samson's parents were given instructions to follow by the angel of God, they followed it exactly as the angel told them. So as children to God gives us instructions to follow. And we must honor God with our bodies. Okay, Samson never cut his hair. He never drank alcohol like God told him to. And he never did it. So we must be like Samson. We must honor God. When we say honor God, it means that whatever we have, our bodies, it belongs to God. So we shouldn't misuse it. Okay, we must honor our bodies. We must honor God with our bodies. And also as children of God, we must not live our lives anyhow. If we call ourselves children of God, like Samson and his parents obeyed God, whatever God says we should do, we must follow. We shouldn't just live our lives anyhow and think that everything is okay. No, it's not. And then lastly, we have also learned that we must pray to God to help us obey his instructions. Now, when the angel of God appeared to Samson's parents, they called him back so that he will show them how to follow the instructions he has given them. As children, we must pray to God to help us obey his instructions. Whatever God has asked us to do, we have to pray first so that he will help us to obey his instructions because it's not easy obeying God's instructions. We need his help to go according to his word. Okay, good. So now let's see what you have to do to live holy lives. So now as children, what have we learned today? We have learned that what, it's, what does it mean to live a holy life? When we say we should live a holy life, what does it mean? Okay. So let's ask ourselves, if we must live holy lives, what should we do as children of God? So I'm going to let you all tell me what we have to do as children of God, to live holy lives. What have we learned today? What must we do as children to live holy lives? From today's story, as children, what do you think you have to do if you want to live a holy life? You can all tell me one. Each person can say one thing you have learned today if you want to live a holy life. Who should I call first? And what about you? Praise God. Praise God. Good. That's very good. Who else? Myra, do you have something to say? Listen to God's word. Thank you. Kenzie, your hand is up again. You have to share his word. You have to share his word. Thank you, Kenzie. 
Never know what about you. If you want to live, you are supposed to pray to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Lemonade. Thank you. You are supposed to pray to God. Who else has anything else? Casey. We have to go to church. We have to go to church. Good. Thank you, children. Thank you. See, when when you are done, when you are in the house, you can take a pen and paper or a pen, a pencil, and write it down. Things I must do to live a holy life. And then you have to obey God's word. You have to follow his instructions. You have to praise God. You have to pray. You have to listen to his word. You have to go to church. All these things are things you must honor God with your bodies. You can't live your lives anyhow, like Samson did. He honored God with his body. So you have to do just like he did. He followed God's instructions. Okay? So next week, I hope okay. when you what we learned, you remember. Okay. Good. Now, who is going to say our closing prayer for us? Before we go over to the primary class, Auntie Jifa is going to take the primary class for us. They are very excited. They are waiting. So before we go over, someone should say a closing prayer. Hey, Myra. God, please help my family and my teachers. And Please help the other people that have gotten Corona virus. And please bless the people that have gotten Corona virus. And please help all of them to stay protected and safe. And please help them get safe. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Mara. Thank you, children. So, thank you so much. And then next week, we we'll hope to meet you all once again. Please, everybody, be here next week, okay? Okay. Thank you very much, Auntie Mona, for that lovely presentation. Children, I guess you are ready for this morning service. Yes, I am. Yes. Close your eyes and pray. pray with Me, Papa, kindly pray with us. Okay. Dear yeah, Lord, please help us and protect us as we go through this morning service. Please make, please make us be good as we go. Please protect us and please make sure nothing happens. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Miss Paku. Who remembers our theme for the month of October? Just raise up for you. Yes, Miss Paku. God General. Very good. God General. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What was our topic for last week? Who remembers it? Our topic for last week was. Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And who remembers our memory verse for last week? Paskins. Paskins. 
first Kings 18:39. When all the people saw this, mm. they prostrate and cried, "The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God." Amen. 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 Thank you all very much. We thank you so much for trying to remind us of our memory. But before we go on to today's service, I want us to take one action song. It is on obedience. O B E D I E N E. Obedience. So we'll all pause and then we'll take the action song. Then we'll come back and continue. B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it joyfully. Action is the key, do immediately. Joy you will receive. B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it joyfully. Action is the key, do immediately. Joy you will receive. is the very best way to show that you believe doing exactly what the Lord commands doing it joyfully action is a key do immediately joy you will receive okay so thank you all very much enjoy the action song sometimes we think that as little as we are we can only serve God when we find ourselves in a bigger position like okay I can only serve God when I become a medical doctor the president of Ghana a dentist or when I am a lawyer that is the only I can serve God but today we are going to learn about something very very interesting a young person a young boy like me, who became king of Judah very good so I want you all to your mics so while we learn the memory verse, then we continue, okay? So our memory for today is from 2 Kings 22, 1 and 2. 2 Kings 22, 1 and 2. Josiah was 80 years old when he became king and he thought was right in the sight of the Lord. 2 Kings 22, 1 and 2. Amen. Can I have Caleb reading it for me? Okay, I will, I will read it. Okay. 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1 to 2. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. He and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Um, um 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1 to 2. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pearl, can you read for me? Josiah yes, was Second Kings twenty two verse one to two. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he did what was right in the sight of God. Second Kings twenty two verse one to two. Josiah, Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Second Kings twenty two verse one to two. Amen. 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 So sometimes we think that we can only serve God when we are old, like when we are thirty years or we are first, or when we find ourselves in hands, like when we become a medical doctor or um, a lawyer 
or a nurse or a dentist or a president. Today, we are going to learn about a small boy, a very young boy who became king of Judah. His name is Josiah. His name is Josiah. Remember from last week, that wicked king, his name is King Ahab. He was a wicked king who did not worship our only true God, but then he worshiped Baal. He worshiped Baal. He also lured many Israelites into worshiping idols. And so that was King But we are learning about Josiah. Josiah's grandfather, whose name is Manasseh, he was Manasseh, King Manasseh. He came at the age of 12 and for 55 years, he also worshiped idols. He didn't worship the only true God. Then Josiah's father, his name was Ammon. He reigned for only two years, but became king at the age of 22. They all did evil in the eyes of God because they didn't worship our only true God. They didn't worship our only true God. Let us look at a few things that Manasseh did. So, King Manasseh sacrificed his own, he sacrificed his own son. He used him for a ritual. He also built altars in the temple of God. And he went there to go and worship them. Idols and bowed down. And he did not walk in obedience to God. So, King Ahab, King Manasseh, and King Ammon, these are the kind of things that they were doing. Worshipping other gods and not walking in obedience to God, to the word of God. However, Josiah was a faithful king. Josiah was a faithful king. And this is our topic for today. Josiah, the faithful king. So, Josiah, he became king at the age of eight years. He became king of age of eight years. And he reigned for 31 years. He reigned for 31 years. He loved God with all his heart. He loved God with all his heart and was obedient to the words of God. He was obedient. He loved God to do the things of God, even though he was just eight years. Ni, how old are you? Nine. Ni? I am nine. Very good. So, King Joseph, very good. Thank you very much. So, King Joseph, a year younger. So he was even younger than you when he became king. No. Josiah was younger than he became king. So it means that you also become a king in your own small way and be open to the word of God and serve God accordingly. Move on. So even though he was a small boy, let us look at some of the things that he did during his reign. So during his time, there was this beautiful temple that had been built by King Solomon. It had been broken down. It was in disrepair. It, was, it wasn't looking nice. And so King ordered that the temple was repaired. The temple of God was repaired. He ordered that I need the temple of God to be repaired. And even all the people who contributed money towards the repair of the temple he ensured that all the money that was supposed to be for the repair of the temple was used for the repair of the temple. He didn't use any of the money for anything. Let's look at another thing that he did. He ordered for the removal and destruction of idols, items in the temple that had been used to worship false gods. So as you can see there, this bull there, Many people were worshiping it. So King Josiah ordered that all idols, idols are things that people go and bow down to it, or anything that takes importance in your life. For example, mobile phones, television, sometimes some storybooks, 
they become our idols. Things that you really enjoy when you wake up from bed, you don't even pray. They pick up your mobile phone. Yes, it becomes your idol. So all the idols, King Josiah ensured that they were destroyed. And everything that was used in worshiping false god also ensured that they were destroyed. Learn the that he wanted them to be destroyed. Let's move on. Okay, so let's go to Exodus 23 to 5. It says that you shall have no other God before me. Remember that it says that you shall not bow down to them or worship them. So God doesn't want us to worship any other thing apart from him. And look at the last part. Punishing them for the parents. So it means that when your parents do something bad, you as a child can be punished for it. So in the same way, um, Ammon and then Manasseh, they did bad things. And so Josiah was going to be punished for it. And it's not only Josiah. To the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Okay, so King Josiah also reinstated priests. During the time of King Ammon and King Manasseh, priests who are usually like pastors, they cannot do anything all by themselves. King Ammon, King Manasseh, they want them to operate like they could. So when Jos King Josiah came, he realized that, no, we should make our priests spread the word of God and work just like priests. So he reinstated them. He brought them back into prison. And King Josiah also ordered that everyone should celebrate the power. As you can see, they are all eaten. He also celebrated it with great zeal. He was happy. The Passover effort festival that is celebrated to make people feel right. So usually they go and then they sell animals to atone for their sins so that they'll be close to God. And also during that time, musicians come and then they come to sing. But there are two things I want us to learn from today's story. God can use anyone. Remember, King Josiah was just eight years. God can use anyone. You can be a boy, you can be a girl, you can be from a rich family, or from a poor family, you can be fair, you can be dark, irrespective of where you live. God can use anyone. Now, every child of God, you, you can God. Your brother can serve God. Your sister can serve God. Every child can serve God. So don't think that you only need to be old to be able to serve God. Every child can serve God. So today, my question to you, how can we serve God at this age? Everybody will talk. How can we serve God at this age? I say, how can we serve God at this age? Yes, please speak. By spreading the word of God. By spreading, so how do you spread the word of God? How do you spread the word of God? When you meet someone, you can tell them about it. Or when someone is fighting, you tell them that about what God says about fight. Yes, ma'am. So when you meet someone, telling them about the word of God. Okay. So when you meet someone, you can tell the person about the word of God. Okay, Mamiya Kosuya, how can we serve God at this age? By praising God. Okay, by praising God. So how do you praise God? You sing to him and go to church. Thank you very much, Mam Nyakutia. Thank you. Yes, my next person. Me, can you tell me how you can serve God at this age? By bringing people who don't ask to church. 
I bring it people who don't know Christ to church. By bringing people who don't know Christ to church. Caleb, yes. How can you serve God at this age? We should worship God and we should read up the Bible. We should worship God and read our Bible. Thank you. Tell. How can you at this yes, age? By obeying How can you your serve God at this age? By obeying your By parents. Obeying... Thank you very much. Zaza. Yes. Zaza. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. Yes. So how can you serve God at this age? To give and obey his orders. Okay. Thank you. To give and obey his orders. So these are a few things that we can do as children of God. To help. To help. So as children, when we are in the evil and we have brothers and sisters who have a lot of things to do in the house, what we can do is that we can help them with the household so the way of helping. When you see mommy something, you can, mommy, can I help you? When you see daddy doing something, daddy, how can I help you? And so we can serve God at this age by helping others. Two, we can care for others. Especially when you see that someone is sick, you need to show some care. Be concerned about people. It is a way that we use that to serve God. Give. And your brothers or your sisters don't have. Your friends, you realize it. You can share with them. You can give them freely. You don't need to be selfish. You have to learn to be unselfish by putting the need others first. Don't always about myself that oh i need this i need that i need that but also think about others how can you make sure that others are also okay and by praising god by singing by dancing by reading the word of god all these are ways that we can serve who god at this age remember that matthew 25 40 b it says that truly i tell you whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So when you are good to someone, when you give to someone, when you care for someone, you have done it, God. Don't think that God is not here. So you, oh, God, but God is not here. No, when you do it to someone, when you do it to your brother, when you do it to your sister, when you do it to your, you have done God. Let us look at a few lessons from here. Let's use our positions to honor God. For example, when you see yourself as a class prefect, a school prefect, um, what have you, even when you find yourself as a big sister, you have to do things that, the kind of things that you say, the kind of things that you do, you don't insult. So you live your life to honor God and you use that position to honor God so that all others will know that, yes, you are a child of God. Number two, in everything that you do, show the nature of God. God is love. God is forgiving. God is caring. God is merciful. So, that or, or someone offends you, you need to forgive. You have shown the nature of God. When you love, when you give, God always gives to us. When you give, you have shown the nature of God. You, you are not greedy. God is not greedy, no. But then everything that you do, the nature of God. Be focused, fair, and firm. When you are doing something, when you are touched to do something, do it according. So, for example, you are class ask to write talk artist. But then, no, as for me, Akosia is my friend. Even when Akosia talks, I'm not going to write Akosia's name down. It is wrong. Be focused, be fair, and be firm. Be faithful in handling money. Look at King Josiah. When he was taxed to ensure the temple was rebuilt, all the money that people gave, he ensured that it was used for its right. So be faithful. When mommy gives you money for something, use it for that purpose. Cheat. Don't go and say that, oh, the thing was 10 cities. Meanwhile, in actual fact, you had it for five cities. No. <laughs>
Okay. So do not be proud or bossy. Do not be proud or bossy. As for me, my parents, as for me, if you do, I'll beat you. No, be humble. Be humble. That is the nature of God. Be humble. And then the last one, prepare to live a life with this God. Remember that we learned that can come on, did bad things, and it was not happy with him. And God was ready to punish him, Josiah, for the wrongs or the mistakes of the father. And so we also need to pray for our parents so that they do the right thing. Sometimes, even when they are doing wrong things, we need them in a humble way, in a humble way, and understand that, mommy, this thing, the Bible says we shouldn't do it. Daddy, this thing, the Bible says we shouldn't do it. And we need to pray for our parents so that God will forgive all of us. So, before we close, our sister, Mamia Akosia, will give us a hymn. It is from MHB 516, and it is when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. So, Mamia Akosia would sing this song for us. <music> Walk with now in the light of his word. What a glory he shows on our feet. What we do with him, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and Any fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, but there's no other way to be happy in this earth, to trust and But there's no other way to be happy in this earth but to trust in Him. Thank you very much. And I hope that you all enjoyed the song. Please remember that there is an activity to be carried out. Go and download the activity and get it done. So... I would ask you if you have a few questions. I'm just taking three questions from you, and then we end it. We pray, and then we close. I say, hey, please go ahead. Why did Why did King Josiah decide to serve God and didn't follow his ancestors like many kings do? Okay, so I say, when you read Second Kings twenty two one to twenty, when the temple was being repaired. A scroll was found. It was found by the priest, the high priest. It was brought to King Josiah. And then he realized that all the things that his father and his grandfather were doing was wrong. It was written in there that they shouldn't worship any other god. Meanwhile, his grandfather and his father were worshiping idols. So he realized that it was bad. And so he had to change and even go and ask God for forgiveness. And so that was how come. King Josiah decided to serve God and not to follow his father and grandfather. Okay, so thank you all very much. And I hope you have enjoyed the session. kindly give us the closing prayer and close. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us, giving us a good ending. Thank you for... Um, as you having a good um time 
good time. Thank you for this meeting. Thank you for everything we have learned today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all very much, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so we'll hand over to Uncle Michael to take over for the seniors. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, Auntie Jifa, for handing over to us. Yes, the senior class has begun, and we thank God. Shall we pray? So Lord, I want to say a very big thank you to you for how far you brought us. We pray that you will come and be in our midst and make us understand every single word that, Lord God, you are bringing to us. Let every word be the seed that fell on fertile ground so that it will grow and be a part of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, so recap. Yes. Recap from last week. Oh. What do you remember? Anybody? A quick one. <laughs> Does anyone remember anything from last week? Era? I remember, remember something anything from sacraments. Now? Okay, so what about sacraments? They are the things we practice. Um, and I also remember that the Protestants practice only two things, baptism and communion. And the, okay, all the Eucharist. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. Catholics yeah. Um, do seven things. Seven, seven others, yes, 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 that's a lot. Well done, well done, well done, that's good. Now, no, you do remember anything else? Do you want to share? Um, I remember that grace meant American favor. That's good. So a summary of what we learned last week um, is that um, sacraments are just, it, it's a ceremony. It's not just an important ceremony that is regarded to show what has happened inward. It's an outward expression that will show what has happened already inside within us. Okay, and then we we brought it down as uh, Era said that the Catholics have seven others, seven, but seven in total. But we, the Protestants, you know, we're two trinities part of the Protestant Church. We have two main sacraments that is baptism and the Lord's Supper. Okay, or the Eucharist. And Uncle has said Eucharist. So when you go anywhere and you hear that, you will not be confused. Okay, yes. We also learned about the means of grace. And I know you came up with a very good um, you know, definition. In fact, last week, her answer was just on point. Your answer was, it was said by one, yeah, the method in which we can assess God's unmerited favor. That was Nano Ye's answer. A method in which we can assess God's unmerited favor, which is grace. And I wrote that down. I know yeah, that was excellent. Okay, so let's move on. Our theme for the month is sacraments. And our topic for today is baptism. Okay. Uh -huh. um, we have two main sacraments, baptism and Eucharist. And today we're looking at baptism. So recap of last week is that we studied that. I just mentioned the baptism and Eucharist. And we also looked at the means of grace. That's what he said last week, you know, give a very vivid definition, which I love. She said that is the method um, in which we can assess God's unmerited favor. So that is what means of grace is, the method. Okay, so today's Bible text is from Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. As we, so I'm going to read to you, okay. Or anyone, would anyone like to volunteer and read the passage for me? Hello? Lorraine, Iran, I know you. Anyone ready to read? Okay, I'm going to read. Okay, good, good. Matthew 2, 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and sp spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and 
teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 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 Well done. Well done. Okay, so that's our Bible text. Very short, but very powerful as well. Our memory verse for today is taken from Matthew 28, verse 19. Okay, Matthew 28, 19. I'll go over once, and then we'll all do it together. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. Okay. Matthew 28, verse 19. Okay. Shall we all go together? Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. Okay. Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. And teach all nations. And, and teach all nations. And and teach all nations. nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of, and of the, the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy, of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. Okay, well done. Okay, so our memory verse is taken from Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, verse 19. I will ask you at the end of the service. So we shall now take our hymn from Methodist Hymn Book 751. Okay. <laughs> So now we come to our main topic, what is baptism? Okay, the Greek word baptize, which means to dip, immerse, sink, you know, or plunge. Um, the word has not been, um, it's, it's, it's an untranslated word. It has not been touched in any way. The only thing is they took the alpha from behind the baptism and then the omega and what an E behind the baptize. So it's still the same word. Now, the definition of baptism is the sacrament wherein the washing with water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit does signify and seal our engrafting into Christ, the partaking of the benefits of the covenant of grace and our engagement to be the Lord's. Now, this definition is what we mainly use during confirmation, okay? And by the time we are done with today's topic, you will understand the definition to the core. In fact, we already have an overview from last week. Okay, yes. Now, the word engrafting from our definition simply means to plant firmly or establish. So to graft onto or into another plant, okay, simply means to put or fix into another plant. Aha. So as you can see in the picture, two plants have been merged and tied, and then the plant grows, and they are one 
like one one strong plant family, you know, together. Uh, you just see the line that shows that there were different plants, but the, it's a, it's not one plant standing on its own. And that's how we are engrafted in Christ. That's how we are grafted in Christ. That's how we are bonded with Jesus Christ when we are baptized. We mentioned earlier that we have two sacraments, and it's one of them. Baptism is one of them. Uh, it's an act of obedience. You hear the word of God, you accept the word of God, and you are baptized. Once you accept the word of God, you are baptized. Okay. And an example is Lydia in Acts 16, 14 to 15, who had the word, received it, and was baptized. Also in Acts 8, um, Philip and the Ethiopian Enoch also, there was the same thing happened. He accepted the word, he had the word, accepted it, and was baptized. So it's 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 more like a command of it. Uh -huh. So baptism of water is a reenactment of the baptism by the Holy Spirit. When you accept Jesus into your heart through faith, and Christ is living within you, the Spirit of God comes upon you. Yes. So baptism is a verbal proclamation, or it's not an an, an outward proclamation as well for the world to see what has happened already within you in your heart what took place in hiding between you and god you want the entire world to see so you come out and you proclaim it so it's a reenactment of the baptism by the holy spirit okay it represents newness a freshness of life okay once you are brought you are brought back to life with jesus you know so ephesians 2 1 to 5 we can find it there is still that especially God who is mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespass, you know, made us alive together with Christ again. So we are made and new, we are brought back to life. Okay. And it goes on to say that it, yeah, by grace you have been saved. Mm -hmm. So that can be found in Ephesians. And that's not the symbol I already mentioned it's of an outward, it's an outward expression of what's already taking place inside. Okay, so you become part of Jesus. That's what that's them grafting. And then in First Peter 3 20, the ark symbolizes us moving into Jesus. Okay, the, the ark of salvation, moving into salvation and into all the good things that he has done for us in our lives. Okay. Yes, so we die to sin. We, are, we become dead to sin. We are buried with, we, 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 are, we, are, we, we die with Jesus and we are dead to sin. We are buried and then we resurrect into the new life, into newness. Okay, yes, and that is what baptism is all about. I already mentioned the public declaration. Okay, you let the entire world know that yes, you are going to follow Jesus with all your heart. Okay, through baptism, it has happened. You know, between you and Jesus and God alone. And now you want the whole world to know that, yes, I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. I've accepted the word and I want the whole world to know. So you go and get baptized. Once we are baptized, we are filled with the Spirit of God and it is one Spirit that fills us. Hence, we become one body that is the church. Okay? So first Corinthians 12 to become one in life. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. So the types of baptism are immersion. You can find them in Matthew 3, verse 16, Romans 6, verse 3 to 4. Okay, the immersion simply signifies that once you are they, they dip you, okay, into the uh, a basin of water or a pool of water. It symbolizes the fact that you die with Christ and now you're dead to sin. And then once they pull you up, you're risen with Jesus Christ into his glory, into his fullness and newness. Okay. Okay. So Paul saying okay. can be found in Joel 2, verse 28 to 29, which says that and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all okay. yeah. Yes. And we, he says, but two, verse seven to eighteen. So the output 
gift of the Holy Spirit on is the pouring. And then you have sprinkling, okay? Spring can be found in Ezekiel 36, verse 24 to 28, which symbolizes cleansing. It says, I will sprinkle clean water you and make it clean from all your idols and everything else that has been defiled. I will give you a new heart and a new mind. And that's an example of what we do in Trinity. The minister in charge will use his hand to collect the water and sprinkle it over the individual who is kneeling down. Okay, and that is what we do. You can see a clear picture of somebody being immersed in water, being dipped in water. And that's an example of the immersion from a baptism. So the most important thing, you know, we are one body. We are not here to fight about which method is good or not good or important or not important. We are one body in Christ. Okay, and the most important thing is that we are baptized in the name okay, of God. Yes, we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the main and the most important thing to note. Yes. The elements of baptism. So we have matter. The physical element being water. Okay. So we use water to baptize. And also, picture here, that's the method of the pouring. They are using um, the clam or the oyster shell or the scallop to collect the water. This is a glass um, clam shell is using to collect water and pouring it on the baby head. Okay, so example of endometria, usually, the clamshell is to signify eternal life, also to signify the new life that you're going to, to lead because you're now in Christ is a new journey, and also signifies the presence of water. Okay, yes. So that is the main thing about it. The form is the words which signify the institution. So Matthew 28, verse 19, the main word said is that we are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then the ordained minister who administered the word, okay, who blessed the ceremony, who confirm and affirm your belief and your faith, okay, it's also very important. There's an element. And you have a picture of a minister in charge, you know. Very with a, a very lovely smile, welcoming you, making you, you know, excited. He's excited about the baptism already <laughs> of the picture. And then the next element is the gift. The gift promise is the covenant of grace. Okay, eternal life through our Lord Jesus is promised, which we receive through faith. So that is that is what is promised. The gift that is promised in the covenant is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, which we receive through faith. Okay, the gifts are available. You benefit from the gift, or you partake in the covenant of grace, and all that comes with it, okay, through being engaged with God. So the gift is there, as, Uncle, as, I, as I said last week, the gift is there, but you benefit from the gift once you partake in the covenant of grace. Your Lord, the Christmas is there. You are gonna and you can benefit from it. So this is this is a very good friend of mine. She's family with my niece. We have been baptized by pouring, and the family is so excited because this child has benefited. Okay, benefited from eternal life. He's enjoying the grace that abounds. You know, and he's as he's benefited, he, the gift is there and has taken part of it. So the family is very excited, as you can see. And usually a child can be baptized in the Lord, and the family will raise the child up. So once the child grows, then they confirm their faith. And that's what we do in Trinity. That's confirmation. Okay. They affirm their faith. They confirm that now I'm old enough and I've seen what the Lord. Lord can, and I believe in him and I've accepted him as my Lord and personal savior. Amen. 
So that's what this family has done, and it's beautiful. They're so excited. They're clothing their white, beautiful white attire, you know, with their lovely, um, fascinators, lovely colors. They're celebrating, you know, the joy of eternal life onto our new, our newborn family member. That's lovely. The significance or importance is that it signifies our new birth in Jesus. Okay, you die to sin and you're born and you're new in Christ. It also signifies our sonship and our association. We become siblings in Christ. We become the church because we have the same spirit. So we have become church. So it signifies our sonship and our association of all the blessings that comes with being a son or a child of God. Okay, yes. It's a public tell the entire world that you have been saved and saved Jesus Christ. Okay, and that you're a believer. Hence, you are, we celebrate that. It's also not a solution for sin. That's one thing people do. People think that being baptized or saying a few words here and there is this a solution from sin, like from punishment. You're running away from punishment. You don't want to go to hell. Not just running away from hell or the punishment of hell, but it's also the participation in the new covenant and the entrance into eternal life. So you're not just trying to get saved and avoiding hell. People just see and recite, oh, they see the words and they see Jesus Christ and they continue living their lives thinking that, oh, they've avoided hell and that is the end. No. You have to partake, you have to continue, you have to leave the world behind, leave your old ways, follow Jesus Christ, make that you return, come back, you publicly announce the world that you believe in Jesus, okay, and then you participate in the new covenant and the internal life. We become part of Jesus Christ's flock. It is the ordinary means by which grace first comes into our lives. We are part of the flock. We are not just single individual sinners walking around, but now we are made whole and we are part of Christ's flock. We will sing our final hymn, MHB 431. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Is it only babies that are baptized or any age? 
Oh, any age you can be baptized. But I was saying that, as you can see, the baby is an example. Usually, the baby cannot decide for him or herself. Okay? They cannot make that decision for themselves. So the family stands in and baptizes the child, that we are committing the child into the Lord's hand. Okay? To become part of the, the, the sheep or the flock. Okay? The flock of the church to become a part of the body of the church and that they are responsible for raising that child in the lord do you understand so once the child grows up the what their parents have done for them like what the family did for this baby once the baby is old enough the baby will now say i want to confirm to the world that that's what my family did for me when i was a baby do you understand and that is that's confirmation. But what enough, like your age, and you have not been baptized yet, we baptize you because now you are old enough and you can make the decision to be baptized. Do you understand? If you have not been baptized and you are 12, or you are old, you know what is right and wrong. After you have been taught in the confirmation class, you can decipher between what is right and wrong and make your own concrete decisions okay you are very assertive okay okay yes then we will now baptize you because you have not been baptized but, but if you have been baptized you will now confirm your faith and ask the lord has done for you do you understand is it clear i know you have a question for you and lorraine as well what is the meaning of engrafting to you? It's like engrafting is something of something into another thing. Like we put in our lives yeah, into God's hands. Okay. Okay. And becoming one with God. That's it. Okay. Now, Noye, what is the benefit of grace um, to when it comes gain, to baptism? To um, gain good afterlife with God. Yes, eternal life with God. Yes, yes, yes. That's the benefit. We enjoy the benefit of an eternal life with God. What are the three types of baptism? And which one is better than the other? The two types. What are the three types of baptism? And I just asked the question that which one is better than the other? Um, yeah, the same. Yeah. Correct, they are the same. Yes, they are all the same. Correct, they are all the same. What are they? So they are all the same. I'm very happy you understand that. That they are all the same. Okay. What is most important? Blessing in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, that is the most important. Yes, yes. Being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that is in our memory verse for today. Okay. Where can our memory verse be found? People Matthew, are checking. Matthew, Matthew 20, 18, 19. Okay, okay. Can anyone tell me what is there finally? Um, Without looking or go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's nice. I'm very happy to hear. Okay, we are done. Thank you all for coming up. Um, shall we pray? Let's close. Okay. So I want to say a very big thank you to you for blessing us with the prayer that everything that we have studied today will stick in our minds and in our hearts, and then it will grow and become part of us, and we'll, we will practice it. When we give birth, our children will grow them in you, 
will commit them into your mighty hand, and when they go and they are old enough, they can confirm their faith. Yes. Thank you so much, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Unto be your blessing and amen glory. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Children. Yes, abide in Christ. I am sure you have been blessed and learning has taken place. Thank you very much, teachers, for blessing our lives today. And I know that we are going to be very, very obedient, like Samson. We are going to be God's generals yes and will be obedient and be strong in the lord like something and hey did auntie jifa say that king was uh, josiah became a king at yes eight years old wow then we can all be faithful servants of god if you know you are eight and above then you should know that god can use you even if you are below eight god can use you just like he used king josiah but what i'm saying is if you are eight and above you do not have any excuse at all that doesn't mean under five so we have any excuse so no and seniors we have learned about baptism and we have learned that indeed it is a command that we go out and make disciples of all nations may god bless us so we are doers of his word and not hearers only now let's listen to these announcements you know covid 19 has not gone away especially jhs2 students this might be your first time of going out of the house remember that your face mask must be on and it must cover your nose your mouth and your chin so you keep it there you don't bring it under your chin you don't hang it on one ear you don't put it in your pocket when you have to eat or drink water you take it off in a proper way as we have taught you and then you put it in a tissue or in a rubber then when you come home you take it off and wash it. Please protect yourself. And remember, you need to wash your hands frequently with soap and running water. And also, if you don't have water, you use your sanitizer. COVID-19 has not gone away. Let us not take any chances. It is when we abide by these protocols that it will go away completely and we can be safe so please 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 how many times did i say that we need you safe so please keep safe for us your teachers activities have been uploaded go to the link shown you can also go to the Avaya Spaces link. We have posted them also on the Avaya Spaces for every class. So you can go to every class and download there. If you cannot download and print, you can go to church or tell your mommy when they go to church, they should go to the office and bring you your activity so you can do it nicely. Choreography, are you there? Brigade, drama, choir, get ready for our nativity. We will be bringing you things to do very, very soon. At this point, birthday boys and girls, if you celebrated your birthday last week, or even if today is your birthday, hold on didn't send your picture next week if you know you are going to celebrate your birthday this week or by sunday please send me at least two pictures i need pictures yes if you celebrated your birthday up 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 on your feet mommy daddy everybody there help me sing happy
happy birthday to our celebrants happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday to you may god bless you now 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 hip 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 hooray hip 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 hooray and hip 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 hooray god bless your new age more birthdays to come yes you can sit down now after birthday boys and girls yes offering time blessing time tell mommy and daddy you want to give your offertory by the link showing star four four seven star one six two to hush yes give your offer tree and god will bless you great we have brought our service successfully to an end close your eyes close your eyes thank god for today's service Commit your week into God's hands. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will help us to abide by your word, by abiding in Christ. We commit our week into your hands. Please protect us. Please be with us. Please help us to be good children bringing glory and honor to your name in jesus name have we prayed with thanksgiving amen let's share the grace together may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all now and forevermore amen amen and so we want to say a very big thank you to uncle Ankama, uncle james and all our choir masters for the wonderful instrumentals we want to say thank you to godspeed photography and our technical team all the children who joined us on avaya god bless you all the children watching at home god bless you there can be no sunday school without you so we come your way again next week stay blessed stay safe bye